Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mushroom Dungeon. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about grain spawn and specifically what grain spawn is supposed to look like before it goes in the pressure cooker, after it comes out of the pressure cooker. So we're going to go ahead and do that in this video. I have some wheat grain that I've hydrated using my usual soak method. I have a video that's completely about how I make grain spawn from start to finish, so I will link it in the description of this video. Basically, I start with 130 degree Fahrenheit water and I dump that over the top of the wheat in a pot, put a lid on it, and just let it sit for at least eight hours. Usually, I'll do it overnight, but eight hours is usually sufficient. So, this grain is perfectly hydrated, and once I strain it off, after the soak is finished, I move it into a shallow storage tote like this with a towel, clean towel in there, and I just allow it to air dry for a few hours. Uh, a couple times during the drying, I'll just kind of turn it over with a spoon or my hand, just kind of mix it. The goal is to get the excess moisture to air dry off the surface of the grain. You don't want your grain really wet on the outside when you pack it into your jars you want it hydrated but not wet and i'll show you a close-up of exactly what it looks like in the jars once we've packed in we have our lids on we're using just our standard pp5 plastic lids with our micropose filter discs and injection ports so let's fill these jars up and i'll show you guys some good close-up shots of what your grain should look like before it goes into the pressure cooker I'm using wheat. Uh, I can get wheat very inexpensively in my area. It's wheat that's just used for chicken feed typically, uh, but I can get 50 pound bags for about 20 bucks. So no matter what kind of lid you're using, you want to make sure you snug it down nice and tight at this point after filling. And this is how full I typically fill my jars, right up to the shoulder, which is where the jar starts to neck in. Take a close up look at this grain jar here. Obviously you don't want any water pooling in the bottom of your jar after you fill it with grain. If you did, your grain is way too wet. Uh, you don't want to see droplets on the inside surface of the jar either. This inside surface looks nice and dry. We just have nice plump grain kernels, but because we let them air dry, uh, they're not bringing any excess moisture to the inside of the jar. So if it looks like this, you nailed it. All right, we're all set. We have our seven quart jars perfectly filled. We have our caps on nice and snug, and we're ready to go into the pressure cooker. The reason I'm using seven quart jars as my standard run is because seven quart jars fits perfectly in the bottom of a Presto 23 quart pressure cooker, which is what I'm using. We're gonna be putting our silicone micropose lid shields on top of each jar here, and that protects our filter discs and injection ports in the pressure cooker from direct exposure to steam. So these are ready to go in the pressure cooker. Uh, I've been emphasizing moisture a lot, and the reason we don't want excess moisture in our jars, you know, any pooling moisture or grain that's too wet is because that can lead to uneven mycelial growth, uneven colonization, and contamination, usually in the form of bacteria. So moisture balance is very important in all things mushroom growing, and Grain spawn hydration is no exception. I also want to mention at this point that I'm using wheat grain, uh, but this technique can be used for pretty much any grain you would want to use for mushroom spawn. Now, some grains are a little harder to hydrate than others, like sorghum is a little more difficult, popcorn. Uh, you may have to extend your soak times or start with a little hotter water, but I do prefer a soak method. I do not like to cook my grain. And the reason is the cooking process is what leads to burst kernels. And burst kernels of grain in your jars greatly increase the risk of bacterial contamination. So you can see in these jars, I don't have any burst kernels, just nice plump whole wheat kernels. The other reason the soak works well is these grains are actually full of bacterial endospores 
and when they soak in that warm water for an extended period of time, it causes those bacterial endospores to germinate. And at that point, they are more easily killed in the pressure cooker. All our swim caps are on, so we're ready to get in the pressure cooker. I'm gonna run these at 15 PSI for 90 minutes. That's usually what I do with quartz. And we'll just leave them right in the pressure cooker, let them cool overnight, and I'll be back with you tomorrow morning when they're cool. Welcome back, guys. It's the next day. I've got the flow hood running. I'm masked up, gloved up, and we are ready to inoculate our grain jars. We're going to be doing three with agar wedges today. I just got a new culture on agar that I'm excited to try out. And the other four are going to be liquid culture, I'm shooting them up with some LC. I'm going to show you guys a close up in just a second here of these jars so you guys know what to expect when you pull them out of the pressure cooker. And if you look closely, they do look quite a bit different. Okay, so for starters, you can see that the grain has settled quite a bit. It was sitting much higher, more loosely packed when I put it into the pressure cooker last night. So the grain does settle a bit while it's running in the pressure cooker. Uh, the other thing you can see is overall the grain is darker. It almost looks a little toasted from the cook process. And you see some real uneven moisture distribution. So you see some grain kernels that look like they're really wet. Other ones look dry. Uh, you may see more moisture towards the bottom of your jars. More of those really moist looking weird kernels. All this is totally normal guys. Uh, this is what you should expect when you pull your grain jars out of the pressure cooker the next day. These differences that you're seeing will be even more severe if you pull the jars out early before they've been allowed to completely cool in the pressure cooker. If you pull them out when they're still warm into a cool room, you're just going to get more condensation. You're going to see more wet kernels. That's why I prefer to just allow them to cool in the pressure cooker overnight. That kind of mitigates the moisture inconsistencies. But this is what they're going to look like, guys. This is totally normal here. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to do the liquid culture jars first. We're going to squirt four of these quart jars up with about five cc's of liquid culture each. And after that, we're gonna give them a shake and move them into incubation. I'll talk about that a little more at that point. One thing I wanna mention too, guys, is that uh, this drives the sterile tech Nazis crazy. They comment on my channel all the time, but I do flame the needles on my syringes. And after I flame them, I do wipe them with the alcohol soaked paper towel. And the reason I do that is because once you flame the needle, it's completely sterile, it's flame sterilized, but you get a bunch of soot on there. And I hate soot on my injection ports, it's just me being anal. So I do wipe the soot off with an alcohol soaked paper towel. I do understand that that is technically not perfect sterile tech. I am not your perfect sterile tech guy. I'm just showing you stuff that works. And I've been doing it this way for 20 years and I've never had any issues. So wiping the needle with a alcohol soaked paper towel does not contaminate the needle. done my agar wedges yet I'm gonna do those next because I changed my setup a little bit instead of working sideways to the laminar flow hood I actually work directly in front of it so I'm gonna change my setup uh, but you guys don't need to see that it's all the same principle what I'm gonna do now is once I get my mycelium in there I give these jars a shake and I shake them in front of the flow hood again check your lids make sure your lids are nice and tight I check them when I pull them out of the pressure cooker as well because it is typical for your lids to loosen up a little bit in the pressure cooking process. So 
make sure your jar lids are nice and snug and then give them a shake in front of the flow hood which I'm going to show you now if you don't have a flow hood you can just do this in a still air box. So I'm going to show that to you guys again. Uh, what I'm doing is inverting the jar, smacking it lightly on my hand to knock those wet grain kernels that are stuck to the inside sides of the jar and the bottom, I'm trying to knock those loose and then roll some of the drier kernels back down in their place. So that's my shaking process. I kind of invert it and then roll it back, invert it, roll it back as I'm smacking it on my hand. So that's what I'm trying to do there is just re-evenly distribute the moisture. And once you do that, the jar is going to look a lot better. I'll show you a close up of that as well. Then we'll move them to incubation. And once you incubate them for a few days, the moisture, everything's going to redistribute and they're going to look perfect. All four jars are in the storage tote. I incubate all my jars in these 105 quart clear Sterilite storage totes that I use for a ton of things for growing mushrooms. I have a bunch of these. Uh, I have some holes drilled in the sides of the tote. They are, you can use anything from one and a half inch to two inch holes and then I just stuff those with balls of polyfill. The holes with the polyfill allow a little air exchange into the tote but they also keep the air flow to a minimum you might run into trouble just having these jars in open air because it's a high airflow environment and that can lead to increased rates of contamination so i definitely prefer to incubate in these storage totes and a little little air exchange is good but uh, you don't want a lot of air movement that's the moral of the story and obviously i've removed my lid shields at this point you don't want to leave your lid shields on or put them back on in the storage tote because we want the surface of our lids to dry out if you leave those wet for a long time extended period of time you can actually get mold germinating on your filter discs and once the mold germinates there it'll punch right through to your jars and contaminate them but the main thing i wanted to show you guys is the difference between going into the pc and out of the pc because that's the biggest contrast you're going to see when you're doing grain spawn and i was actually discussing this with one of my patreon members i believe it was kevin so kevin if you're watching shout out to kevin and he was just getting started doing grain spawn and he saw a drastic contrast in his grain from when he put it into the pressure cooker to when he took it out. He was kind of confused, so it was his idea for this video. So we'll check back in on these in a few days. Hopefully we'll have some germination. It's been five days since I inoculated my jars and I am set up right in front of the flow hood here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm gonna try and talk loud. This obviously is one of my agar jars. And I wanted to show you a close up of this one because the mycelium is really jumping off nicely. You can see that nice linear white mycelium jumping off those agar wedges into the grain. So it's a good visual. Your agar jars are always gonna take off before your LC jars. Uh, that's just kind of the nature of it. My LC jars are just starting to take off, but this was a better visual because this definitely has that nice thick white mycelium, which you guys can see. So you can see from top to bottom, our moisture balance looks really nice again. Uh, we don't have any more of those weird wet looking grain kernels. Everything looks nice and homogenous. So this is where we want to be. And that's just the difference of five days or so, incubating in the tote, allowing everything to redistribute. What I typically do is I'll allow these jars to get one third to one half colonized and then I will spritz them down with rubbing alcohol again and give them another shake in front of the flow hood to just redistribute all those colonized grain kernels around the jar and that's just going to greatly speed up your colonization. So one thing to keep in mind is that every species or strain grows a little differently in terms of its mycelium. Some are very thick and white, others are very thin and wispy. 
with your herichium species uh, that's especially true a lot of times I'll get people who have just started growing and they've done some oysters and then they'll decide to try an herichium strain like lion's mane and they just don't see the mycelium growing it's so fine and wispy at first that it's really hard to see unless you know what to look for and you have some experience so just keep in mind that every species and strain grows a little differently and unless you see other signs of trouble just give them a little time uh, it's been five days and as i mentioned my liquid culture jars are just starting to grow and it's very wispy at this point but some things to watch out for are strange colors in there if you see any yellow black or green that's typically going to be mold contamination if you see areas of grain that are looking really wet or slimy that's typically going to be bacterial contamination so until the mycelium captures your grain they should look just like this if you see them starting to look differently you know slimy wet that's that's usually contamination so that's something to watch for if you do suspect a jar has contamination make sure you separate it and isolate it from your others so that contamination doesn't spread to other jars on you. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you haven't had a chance yet, check out my Patreon page. It's a great way to communicate with me, uh, to make video suggestions if you have a topic you'd like me to do. The link to my Patreon page will be in the description of this video. And as always, hit me up in comments, let me know what you think, and I will catch you next video.